Good evening. Welcome to the January 3rd, 2018 meeting of the New Market Town Council. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we have one Councilor absent this evening, Amy Thompson. Council Thompson has an excused absence. Uh, and uh, we'll open the public forum at this time. If any members of the public would like to address the council. Seeing none, I close public forum at 7.01 p.m. There's no public hearing. And I would uh, accept a motion to approve the minutes for the December 20th regular meeting. So moved. Second. Any corrections or changes? If not, please call, please call the roll. Council Burns. Aye. Council Finch. Abstain. Council Cast. Aye. Council Bowden. Aye. Council Weinstein. Aye. Council Pike. Aye. Motion passes 5 0 to 1. And I'd also accept a motion for the December 20th non public meeting minutes, please. So moved. Second. Any changes? If not, call the roll, please. Council Burns. Aye. Council Finch. Abstain. Council Cast. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Motion passes 5 0 to 1. <coughs> and please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Who's recording the minutes? Missing. Missing. Patricia. Oh, she's doing it by tape. I apologize. Um, first, I wanted to publicly thank the Public Works and the Environmental Service Department. Uh, for their efforts during the uh, Christmas storm. Um, while many people were aware of the blizzard that we had on Christmas Day and the significant amount of snowfall, I don't think people realized that the crews were actually called in on Christmas Eve at 9 p.m. due to a water main ba break on Bay Road. Uh, so basically they worked through the night starting at 9 p.m. that evening until 3 in the morning when the snow started and had to turn around and begin plowing for the full day. Um, I just wanted, I wanted to thank them publicly for all their efforts, especially during the holidays, and the number of compliments I received for the state of our roads as well. Um, people were just impressed that they were just so we well done during the, the holidays as well. So now we'll roll into the next stor <laughs> storm, and I'll give an update where we are. Uh, we've been monitoring the storm for the last few days. Today we had conference calls with the Department of Homeland Security for the state, and it's going to be a significant storm tomorrow. Uh, we're not under a blizzard warning here, but we're on the um, cusp. The, there is a parking ban in effect from 6 a.m. tomorrow morning till 6 a.m. Friday morning. Any vehicles on the road uh, may be towed or fined. We will be uh, having no school in the di tomorrow in the district, and we will be uh, closing town offices to keep people off the street. Um, one of our philosophies are that if we ask people not to go on the streets, then we shouldn't be encouraging people to come into the, the town offices. So we will be closing off town offices tomorrow. Uh, I have had a couple questions about warming centers because right after the snow, we're going to have another Arctic freeze. Uh, Saturday is supposed to be a, a high in the negative degrees. We do not have a warming center at this point in time. Uh, and we do not have, and there's only one overnight warming shelter open in the state, and that's in Rochester. Um, if we have a need for it on uh, Saturday, we will have a, only a daytime warming center open, which would be basically open from maybe 7 to 7 or sometime during the day, but it would not be open at night. Uh, it used to have, the Red Cross used to open shelters uh, town by town, and they stopped doing that, and it's now on a regional basis. And they, there's no indication at this point in time that they would be opening any shelters. Um, I think unless there's a, a major power outage on uh, from the results from the storm. Uh, they're predicting as of right now anywhere between 8 and 14 inches of snow for here and as I said there's on the, we're on the line for coastal Rockham County which will be having the, which does have the blizzard warning in place. So that's where we are. We'll be notifying everybody tonight by via email and give updates throughout the day tomorrow. Also on my unwritten report I'm happy to announce that the next week the town of Newfields Board of Selectmen will be taking up an agreement between 
uh, that we've come to an agreement on providing dispatch service for their town again. Uh, as the council is aware, I emailed you the agreement so you wouldn't be surprised, but you'd be voting on it sometime in February. Uh, it would be for $28,000 in services for the first year, and that would increase by the um, CPI Boston in the second year. It's a two-year agreement. Um, they were both police chiefs and fire chiefs in both communities have been working hard on, on getting this done, and hopefully we can see that come to fruition. I know the police chief is going to look at other communities as well uh, to continue to try to offer the service. We've been getting a number of questions. Um, as many people were aware, prior to the uh, end of the last year, we had a number of individuals pay their property tax ahead of time due to the new tax law. Well, the law didn't quite fit what people were assuming, and so we had some individuals ask whether or not they could have their prepayment refunded. There were two um, legal opinions, one that the town uh, tax collector got, one was from the Tax Collectors Association and one was from our own legal counsel. And the, in regards to refunding property taxes that were made in 2017, there, there's actually no statutory authority exists to refund prepayment just because somebody requests it. A prepayment is not an overpayment as no bill was issued and a tax bill um, would, for 2018 wouldn't be coming out until the, the spring. So the state law allows us to accept the money, but it doesn't allow us to give back the money. So um, that's where we are uh, with that. And that's all I have time, Mr. Chair. Okay. Are there any, I see no comments or questions about that. Are there any committee reports? I see none. Wouldn't expect any since our <laughs> last meeting was December 20th. That's. Uh, Okay, let's move on then. Um, resolution 2017-18-24, authorizing the town administrator to enter into a contract with educational building consultants for town hall security improvements. Whereas, whereas it has been determined that town hall requires additional safety and security measures. You to just need to do by town. That you're voting on it. Okay. Save your voice. <laughs> That's a good suggestion. We'll stop there. But I have a motion uh, to approve resolution 1718-24, please. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2017-2018-27-24. Second. Any comments? Any questions? Please call the uh, presentation or, yeah, or, or, or no, we don't do we not need it if, if you have no questions we don't okay, have to okay. but so no I didn't know if <laughs> that's probably Sorry. a good idea <laughs> even for the people at home just yeah. to have a few words to say this is what it is yes we're we're looking to do uh, increased security and safety improvements to our town hall um, it's about really all I have to say at this point okay, <laughs> okay. um please call the roll Council Burns. Aye. Council Finch. Aye. Council Cast. Aye. Council Bowden. Aye. Council Weinstein. Aye. Council Pike. Aye. Motion passes six and up. Zero. I think I'll stay right here since the next two yeah. also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good idea. Resolution 2017-18-25, authorizing the town administrator to enter into an agreement with energy effic efficient investments to conduct no cost energy auditing. I'd accept a motion to approve that resolution, please. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2017-2018-25. Second. So. Yes, we're requesting an approval for this to move forward and do an energy audit, uh, which will allow us to look at performance contracting for our town facilities. Um, there was a commit uh, RFP or RFQ put, put out that requested information back, a committee was formed, uh, we entered, sent, uh, had two respondents to our, our uh, RFQ, we met with, we set up schedules to meet with both of them, uh, one uh, did not attend, one, one did, uh, we asked a series of questions that were developed prior, the, the company that, that did attend, uh, being Energy Efficient Investments, answered all of our questions that were, were pre-established. Uh, their particular audit does come to us at no cost, where the other company's audit does come with an expense if we choose not to engage with them. Uh, 
that's why we're recommending going with them. It's, it's, it's quite a lengthy process that we've been at with this, and I, you'll notice there's not a ton of supporting documentation because I'd have to give you this plus two more books. So I, I kind of opted not to, uh, to do that just because it's you know a little light reading and go forward. We are rec strongly recommending this because it does allow us to not only get this audit at no cost, but allows us to take the steps going forward to recommend performance contracting for our town facilities, which will allow us to do upgrades within our facilities based on energy savings. For instance, the cost to upgrade the heating systems, uh, as you know, I repaired something quickly over there tonight, uh, in this facility would be paid for by the savings of energy that that particular new system would operate under. And it would be paid back over savings over a period of time. We've also done uh, some reference checks and, and one of the reference checks I, I had yesterday was with uh, uh, Plymouth School. In their particular case, uh, they were looking at approximately 15% energy savings in one of their facilities it ended up being 30 to 40%. Uh, they did over $3 million with e uh, energy efficient investments. Extremely happy with them um, and planning on continuing to do a phase two, a three, and four, so on and so forth as they go forward. So it appears that in energy efficient investments does a, a, a very good, they are New Hampshire based and they only work in New Hampshire. They're, they're not a multi-state organization, so they're, they're quite, quite entrenched in, in, in the state of New Hampshire. So we felt quite comfortable with providing this recommendation, or the committee felt quite comfortable providing the recommendation going forward. <coughs> I have a question, real quick. I'm going to an addition. Um, one of the things I know that that we, the committee, which was made up of myself, uh, school board member Kennison, uh, <coughs> member of the public, uh, <coughs> Russ Simons, and um, Greg, and Chris Andrewski, the assistant yep, superintendent. The minister, yes. And this company, a lot of the um, performance contracting companies are a one-shop deal. So if you go with them, they're going to do the audit, but you also need to buy their materials, their system for the, right, the rest of the, basically the life of the contract and the life of the system. Uh, this company, on the other hand, will do the audit and then make the recommendations and help us go out to bid for different companies who can come in. Uh, it may be a little more at the beginning. However, you're not tied into this one company for the life for, forever. And that was one of the benefits that the, the committee uh, I thought was one of the, the highlights of that of this uh, bid. Now, I, just a quick question: Did the school already approve this, or that? Well, it was supposed to go out tomorrow night's meeting, which okay. has been canceled. Um, uh, but it's been well supported from from the feedback that I have. So I I, I don't foresee any issues of it not being supported school side. Council Cast. Um, so I did have a, qu my original question was about flexibility because I assume when you pick this company because there's, even though there's a, no obligation, you do anticipate going forward with them. I, we anticipate based on the report or the energy audits mm -hmm. looking at making improvements. So we would use them as, because they are the guarantor of the energy results and the designs. The difference between them and, say, another contractor is they don't rep one line. In other words, they're not a controls manufacturer. So they would look at all the different control systems out there and then make a recommendation to us of which one would be the, our best fit, not their brand. Uh, the same with the equipment that they may be recommending. So we're not beholden to, and I'm, since they didn't submit a bid, Johnson Controls wouldn't wouldn't be saying you're going to use Johnson Controls equipment for this particular thing. This this company could be Johnson, it could be Siemens, it could be um, any of the other control contractors out there that may be we engage with for these energy improvements. So it, it, it does give us a lot of flexibility within that. They also look at what they call an open or backnet system, which will allow us to have multiple vendors 
uh, looking at it. And that's what we're really trying to do is not getting us necessarily tied to something that we're, it's going to own us forever and ever and ever. Okay. So I appreciated you bringing up the flexibility part of it because that was a question. Um, can you just talk a little bit about what an energy audit entails and so what sort of systems they'll be looking at and um, how in depth they'll be going? Well, I, I think the, the, the quick answer is the roof down and all around. Um, they go through the entire building envelope, not just the heating systems, the cooling systems, but they look at the plumbing, they look at the windows, they look at the insulation levels, they look at the roofs themselves and how well they're performing. So it's really very encompassing audit. And in order to gain our largest um, energy savings, you have to look at all of that. Um, so you can come in and, and you probably hear a lot of people we talked about, we did a lighting project for the town. Those are those low hanging fruits that have those quick paybacks. Well, the good part with those quick paybacks is they also allow us to use some of that quick payback to pay back something that is not necessarily as quick. One of the toughest things is, is windows. Windows are a 40 to 50 year payback at best. Um, but if you have something that pays back in two years and you do it over a 15 year span, you may be able to put windows in because the payback of something else is offsetting that. So that's how, we c that's how that is kind of really looking, looked at holistically of the, the entire facility <coughs> from the ground up. And, can I, and so they'll be looking at every, every building mm -hmm. throughout the town and the town school. and schools. I, again, I have said this at a bunch of meetings at this point, but um, had the opportunity to hear from a lot of these different vendors at the municipal conference that I attended, and um, I'm very much sold on the idea of performance contracting, and and had the opportunity to talk to representatives from this company, and so I thought that they were very well spoken and articulate about the projects that they've worked on and you know, they, I saw some of the examples of projects so I um, feel pretty confident about this. I think one of the biggest pluses that our perform performance contracting has is it's a net zero impact to taxpayers. We don't increase the budget to do these improvements to our buildings. We're paying for them by the savings and energy that are created mm -hmm. by improvements. And that's a huge plus, especially when you start talking impact to taxpayers. Uh, Council Bowden. Uh, what is the uh, the term that we're going to be, or that we may be um, agreeing to as far as time? We won't know that term if it's a 10, 15. I don't, I don't like to go over 15. You can go up to 20 years in the state of New Hampshire. Um, but we won't know until we know what the audit results show and what kind of paybacks that we actually have. Um, so we could be saying this particular building is a 10 year, but another building is 15 because it doesn't have the same return. So we'll look at those and of course these will all come back to you um, for approval once we get to that point. So I guess, I guess the question was how, what is the term that we are agreeing to with this company? If, we don't, if they come and they do the audit and we don't do anything with them, we don't do any of the changes. We owe nothing. So we could go ahead and make changes on our own? Yeah. We can, yes. I'm not saying that's what yeah. we would do. That's we can. And, and I've done that approach elsewhere also. And I've d actually done both ways where we've had the audit and gone through full performance and where we had the audit and did the work ourselves to try to save some of the contracting costs. Uh, a lot of it has to do with cash flow. We, we actually, uh, I asked them that during the, the interviews. I said, so you're saying you're going to excuse me, eat the, con the audit if we don't go with it? And they said, yes, we no understand that. But it's, they want to put that up front to be able to work with us on mm -hmm. other projects. Yeah, as, as I would understand it, what we're basically agreeing to at this point by this vote is that we're sort of giving them exclusivity in doing this audit. They get to do the audit. We're not having other companies do an audit at this time, and then they get to present their results to us. And that's all that we're really guaranteeing by the vote tonight, as I understand it. The thing you might give me a little more insight into, 
Uh, it all sounds good to me. I don't, whenever I'm even looking at a contract down the line, I like to understand how the company I'm working with makes their money, and I, I don't fully understand how they make money yet. And it's, so that's they, they, <coughs> they make money on, in, in the long run, of the energy savings and the guarantees in the installation. So there's a, there's a profit margin built into like the installations for that company to do. So okay, they, so they, I thought we could pick our vendor. Do they take We can, them? we can, but they're managing the process, so they have a, a piece of the pie as part there's of it. There's a cost to the, there uh, is their a cost. services at that yeah. time. Yeah. Unfortunately, nothing's for free, as we know. No, no, so I, I, I don't expect it, free. I just want to know, I make sure I know what. <laughs> it's sort of as if they're serving as a, G, a general contractor, and yeah. they're the ones overseeing the project. Part of their, their uh, plus are also assisting with the financing. So right. they will go out for the, the help. At the, the end finance. of the day, they have to guarantee the return. They have to, they guarantee what the energy return is. If they don't meet it, it's their risk. So they, they have to make sure that certain parts of a manager, who we use to do those contracts, who we do to use those installations, what, what materials are at our discretion with them, but they are a very integral part of the process. Yeah, and just, just to finish that up, is, is the way when we make our payments, and what the payments we'll be making will be based on our current energy use, right? It's our current energy use, and then as energy costs go up, there are escalators that they have that, because you have to. I right. Mean, and what if cost energy costs go went up? down like they have at times? We actually reap the benefits of that. Okay. So that it just is sort of, they may have escalators, de-escalators, but it's based off current usage. And their typical energy calculations that they're going to target are going to be about 80%. So if, they, if the return is 100%, their cost basis is based on 80%. So there's really a factor in there that allows for that movement or protection, if you want to call it. Yeah. So there is, there's a lot that goes into it once we get to that point, but this is the first step we have to make in order to even find out if we can do anything. And I'll pass this along, but I just want to finish up. So is, are they making money, going back to that, again, I don't mind they make money, I just want to understand it, is that uh, they make some as, a, uh, by operating a general contractor, there may be, um, but we're not really paying up front for the cost of the work, right? So, nope. they're, so we, they, we don't, they don't see their payment at that time. They see it as a function of a part of the savings that is getting made Tip on Typically what happens is, is they get paid based on what's a lot of times referred to as a municipal lease. So at the end of the day, there's a, a bond that they're getting paid for and the payment to said bond is, is through that energy savings. Um, typically a lot of times it's run right through them. They get their money up front. They just have to make a guarantee that lasts over that period of time. Whatever that period. So is. they go out to some financer that gives yep. them the money, and then as they pay, make their bond payments, we are paying them enough based on the old energy usage. Correct. If there's enough savings, it makes their bond payment and some profit for them. It's profitable for them, and and hopefully, uh, as as I mentioned with one of the references, their their return was at 15 percent that they guaranteed, and they were actually they're actually running 30 to 40 percent, which means that community is saving more than the guarantee. So that's actually reduced their cost of overhead. Right. So I'm sorry that I asked about eight questions in a row. <laughs> uh, but I think it's Council yeah. Cass next. Oh, those are good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> um, I had a question. Um, I don't know whether you or the town administrator can speak to the combination of doing it with the schools. And if the schools, schools decide not to go forward for some reason, is there there's not really any net, no. I mean. No, no penalty. We'll just is go there forward. Any, is there any net gain? By no. not having them? By having them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Together. Because if, um, just by scale. Yeah. And if we have one company that comes in and wants to do all our heating systems, then we'll have one town-wide heating system. So um, that would be the downside then. That would be, that synergy would be. Yeah, lost. Right. Lost. Okay. I, I will say that the, the support that we had in our committee from the school side and the support that I've had from uh, the superintendent with it is, is very high. So they're very interested in, for instance, I know we're doing a major remodeling of our schools, but our elementary classrooms are not seeing new lighting. Well, new lighting is one of the biggest returns. We can replace all of that lighting in the school and see some pretty 
significant energy savings by doing that. So it, there's, it's a plus for both. It really is. It's mm -hmm. it's 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 good practice for both. Council Weinstein. Um, I just have two quick questions. I think. <laughs> so I mean, do they look at solar options? They look at every or option: they, solar, okay, wind, uh, okay. geothermal, all of that, get, as part of it. Okay, great. Um, and then, how long do we expect this to take? It's it's a couple month process. It it it's pretty in depth. They go through all of our not only just our billing but our facilities, and they do testing and uh, they'll do envelope testing. So it's 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 pretty pretty. Uh, tedious process. So springtime, do we think? That's when we're and I'd be probably looking to hopefully be able to bring some more information back and, and make some more presentations at that point. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's worth mentioning the school was really I heard about the school being on this before I even heard I mean they were they were talking about this at the early stages of the uh, of the discussions about the school renovation. So the school's been talking about this for Couple of years, anyways. I think so. I think they're. there uh, Did they come to the same conclusion? You must know if is it the same vendor that if they're going to go with somebody, is this who they will go with? We we made. Th they actually have a memo from me also requesting the same vendor. It, it it makes no sense to go with two vendors. I mean, that's one of the shared services that we're, things that we're trying to work on. So it really <coughs> it's, it's, it creates good practices. I see no more comments. Want to go to the vote? Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Finch. Aye. Councilor Cast. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. And uh, next up, resolution 2017 18 26, authorizing the town administrator to enter into a contract with Securidine Systems for Community Center Safety and Security Improvements. I have a motion, please, to accept this resolution. Um, make a motion to accept uh, resolution 2017-2018-26. Second. Any comments, questions? This is a continuation to our uh, security improvements at all of our facilities. This is the next facility. Um, as you can see, it's considerably less than what it costs to do town hall. And as we talk to you about when we did started the town hall process we needed to put the backbone in place this ties into that existing backbone system uh, and it's going to allow us for a much higher level of safety and security measures at Muni Center. Um, will this include I know this is primarily the building but will it include any outside lighting? I know that was brought up as a concern. Um, it's it's dark in that area. People, you know, we have some some nighttime programming, especially now when it's dark at 4:30. This doesn't address the lighting, but I'm working on the lighting as another Separate. component elsewhere. Okay, thank you. Hopefully, I'll have that to you within the next meeting or so. Yeah, and I, it, I guess it's worth mentioning, and I think it's you address it here. But you know, since we're working with one vendor for the backbone and everything else, that that means that it's sort of on you to make sure that the pricing is uh, is appropriate moving forward because it's not a competitive situation anymore. It, it's difficult in certain systems to get into that competitiveness, and this happens to be one of those types. There are other companies that rep the same product but then we get into passwords and access and a lot of issues that I'd like to avoid so yes we're we, we look at them I, I can tell you when we put access on a door you're going to spend twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars a door to put it on a door um, and that's pretty standard practice costing so we do look at that carefully council Bowden Looks like the platinum service agreement is what is being proposed here. Do we look at any other levels? Uh, silver. The um. <laughs> interesting part is uh, they have a platinum service. Another company has what they call the white glove service. Um, we can do with, without any service. We just pay for the regular maintenance checks. They don't kind of have an in between with it. At this particular time, I'm, I'm sure that they can customize something if we wanted to. Uh, 
curious to see what the difference was between platinum and different levels that they have, yeah. I guess. I, I've, I, I've done it without any service on it, and I, I, I gotta say, the, 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 the service in this case, it's $1,207 and $1 $1 a year, paid for itself, because anytime there's a software problem, uh, a camera problem, it's covered. Seeing no other lights, call the roll, please. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Finch. Aye. Councilor Cast. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've taken enough of your time tonight. Yeah. So you stay at home tomorrow? Everybody uh, is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, just going for a joyride. Yeah. <laughs> well, I might. Yeah. <laughs> they can work remote with a new phone system. Yeah. <laughs> stay safe. Okay. Um, and uh, oh, resolution 2017-18-27, replacement of channel 13 broadcast equipment. I'd accept a motion to approve resolution 1718-27, please. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2017-2018-27. Second. IT director is here to discuss. Yes, go for it. Please. Um, I think in the write-up on the staff report that I said, Channel 13 has become one of the main ways we're feeding information out there to the public, including its streaming properties, if you will. <coughs> um, we've had some issues in the last year, some being kind, um, with quality, with outright failures. And the equipment is very old, and uh, we submitted an RFP to uh, companies that want to submit quotes to us. We got back three pretty, pretty complete quotes, I have to say. Um, and we are recommending that we should go with the Telview one. It's, I believe, about $6,000 more than the next lower one. But we do get free streaming and free video on demand with that. Mm -hmm. And with the other one, that's $8,000 a year. So it really pays for itself right off, right out of the gate. So that you know, this is the the system we're currently using is the original, pretty much <laughs> system since Channel 13 was founded. So it's time to replace cable it. vision. If you remember them, yeah. 15 years ago, it's yeah. pretty mm -hmm. old stuff. Uh, Councillor Bowden, uh, Councillor Casper first. Oh, sorry, Councillor Casper. Either way, um, do you have so the you said the main difference was the streaming and on demand service yep. that makes up the difference in the two bids um, can do you have metrics right now on how much those services are being requested or used we know we know the town hall uh, what's called town hall streams which is our current streaming provider uh, gets used pretty extensively actually we have no way of knowing what people watch on channel 13 itself Comcast doesn't monitor that can't give us those numbers mm -hmm. so we don't know who's watching this on channel 13 um, online, we just get a bandwidth allocation every month. This is how much bandwidth you use. So we don't know, are they watching the most current ones? Are they watching older ones? Are they watching? But the bandwidth is always pretty high. So there's a fair amount of watching going on. What percentage of the bandwidth allocation would you say has been consumed? It's, it's an unlimited, it's an unlimited uh, pipe they give you, basically. Okay. So it's, it's I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a chunk. It's a lot. Okay. I'm just trying to get it the <laughs> justification for the additional streaming and on demand, you know, that, that the demand is there for those services or that you have some trending that they're being used. So it's worth that extra money. Go ahead. That's actually probably the number one thing we're requested is actually the streaming and the on demand. Mm -hmm. um, since I've been here, most people have been, you know, they, they can't watch it live and they can't watch it when it's on a repeat. So a lot of people just go on their computers now and watch it. Uh, I think uh, if we didn't go with it uh, and we didn't have this video on demand or the streaming, um, you'd actually also be cutting out a large p portion of the customers that either don't have cable right. or use satellite service. This is the only way they can get uh, public access is through the streaming. 
Yeah, I wasn't questioning that it's a method to, to get the information out there. The, the, it was more how much is it is it being used yes, to justify the... I mean, okay. from, from conversations, yes. I, mean, I, I don't have the technical information there, but I can tell you from talking to the public when they come in, they say, oh, I, I watched it online. Not only that, we, we use it internally yeah. mm -hmm. to look back at meetings and find out what was said or what wasn't said, or even to do minutes. So it's, I mean, $8,000 is well worth it. Uh, Council Bolton? Okay. Um, I guess in similar lines as far as viewership per month, will this new system allow us to, v to see, monitor anything as far as do capturing the viewership for non technical terms, I guess. Tim, you, you, more, you might be more aware of the question. Will the new system be able to capture viewership status? Viewership yes. status? Yeah. Okay. With the new system, unfortunately, we're on a third party right now with Town Hall Streams. So the only thing we're able to really do is send them the signal for, their, for our live stuff. But with the new system, we'll be able to do everything that's on our channel. So for stuff that we tape outside, for the graduations, for everything we have, for the plays, we'll be able to put that all in the same place, mm -hmm. and we'll be able to find out who's watching, not who, but how many people how many right. are watching <laughs> what. And actually, we'll even tell what times. By the IP address. Well, yeah, we'll be able to know, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, by them logging in, or not logging in, but yeah, it's uh, going to the site saying, all right, well, yeah, it's our highest rated, or, our most viewed thing this month was the Christmas parade or the Christmas concert, and 53 people viewed it on Monday. Sweet. Yeah, another five people viewed it at 8 a.m. on Sunday. So, okay, we'll have all that information. And the other fun thing about going with the Telview or some of the other companies is that we can eventually expand into a Roku channel if we decide to go that way, and other means of getting media out there. It's okay. more expansive. It allows us to grow more, whereas the other systems are kind of just this is what we have, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, the second part of the question, I guess, was G and G and Televues look to have pretty extensive quotes. Access AV. Yep. Yeah, um, it doesn't look to have much meat. No, they just, unfortunately, that's the way they put their quote together. Um, both Hellview and g and they went very labor intensive as to what we're getting and you know, so what we can expect. Access AV kind of just, this is, yeah. You want a new playback server? This is what we have. Thank you. Council Burns. I answered my own question. I found it in here, so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Council Money State. Sorry. Um, <laughs> just anecdotally, uh, I know that I personally have used our streaming services yep. and on-demand services um, quite a bit, and I know that others have as well, and I think it's a... Uh, uh, important service for the town um, and for people to get information at this point. So I think it's, mm. it's very important. And um, I, I guess my hope is that, that this will improve, I'm assuming that it's all in one package, this will improve you know, the sound quality. Yes. Cause yeah. It's frustrating when people <laughs> watch a meeting and they can't hear. Right. So, so that will all, it's all one bundle. Yeah. Um, the only question I had was Telview, which is, I guess, what you're uh, recommending. In terms of streaming, is it going to be available easily from a variety of devices? Because I know I've watched the stream, too, but I find that you really want to use it on a computer. But is yeah. this going to be available to more basic devices like tablets? Tablets, or whatever? Yeah. laptops, okay. everything. Yeah. So just ease of use for or ease of accessibility, I guess. If you have an internet connection with Flash on it, you're good to go. Okay. <coughs> One question I had is just not so much about which vendor, but will, will this change make it better f 
for people listening at home. Maybe it's good already, but uh, the uh, the hockey puck that we uh, got first from Council Bowden that, that when for people mm -hmm. that are calling in remotely, uh, that has been such an improved experience here. Uh, will the new technologies make it easier for people at home to hear the the counselors that are calling in to make that more seamless yeah. for people? I, the biggest thing is is it puts it all in one place. So for right now, we have a playback server and we also have an on-demand site, which are two different companies that we're sending two different signals. So what we're really doing is we're splitting the signal, and one's going to Comcast, the other one's going to Town Hall Streams. So, and if we have a problem with the online side, I mean, there are times when we're watching on TV and we can't really see this difference because we can hear fine. Yeah. But people at home <coughs> who are watching on Town Hall Streams have an issue with it. And yeah, so, so that means we have to then go through other channels to get there. Whereas with Teleview, it's got all being in one place. The signal goes one place and gets sent out the same way. So we don't have to even worry about that. And if we have whatever issue, then we can know immediately that this is an issue and we can solve it immediately by going through either tech support or working with one of their guys to come out and fix it. Council Cast. Um, as we've heard proposals for other systems that we're upgrading or moving to new technology, we often hear that um, we're not having to invest in equipment anymore and the companies that we're contracting with will kind of upgrade things for us as things and technology improves. What's what's the nature of, of the situation? The software updates they'll do. So okay. we'll get all software updates. Um, as far as certain hardware updates we'll have to invest in. For example, if we want to go with the Roku channel, that's an additional piece of hardware that yeah, so we would have to purchase. Mm -hmm. But so all software updates they do with just the hardware stuff that we want that we'll have to invest in at some point if we choose to go that route. Okay. So we're still investing in hardware at this point for the playback server yeah okay so we're investing in the playback server and a few other components to have in the rack mm -hmm. and then the rest of it's going to be all let's go software and i apologize i'm not at all familiar no with the, these kind of systems so um i'm do you know if that model is changing anytime soon in this area the no. way it is in other areas? um we're going to be getting what is there they actually just went through a series of changes Mm -hmm. So we will be getting the most up to date. Um, it's probably about five to six years out before their next hardware update. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking like a five to six year horizon before exactly. we might want to consider upgrading again. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. And just out of curiosity, because we usually ask this now, is any what what the school uses the service, our service, when they're having meetings in here. Do they have a different streaming service they use for school events? So it's it's no, all this service yep. is being used for school in town. That's the other thing we've kind of included in the uh, proposals is the ability to go on location for different events to do live as well. Yeah. Great. Great. Sounds very good. Seeing no more lights, please call the roll. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Finch. Aye. Councilor Cast. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Go. Thank you guys Thank you. very much. Uh, any correspondence to the town council? Or not. Um, this, there's a resolution you need to read. Oh, I'm sorry. Ordinance, actually. Okay. Yes, I skipped right over that. I'm so anxious to be done here. First reading. You got it right there? Yeah. Uh, you want me to do it? Sure. Go ahead. Ordinance number two. Uh, 1718 ordinance amending chapter 30 of the code of the town of Newmarket, New Hampshire, allowing permitted parking in certain lots. The town of Newmarket ordains um, that chapter 30 is hereby amended with the following by adding the following article, uh, section 4-38, stopping standing and parking, adds 29 Beach Street extension to the uh, locations of permitted parking from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. It takes pay place effect upon passage and there has to be a public hearing at the next meeting. Okay. Councilman Weinstein. Um, I don't know if I want to bring this up now or closing comments or whatever, I guess, um, but it, it relates to this. So where parking has been brought up now for uh, multiple times and um, 
I know we had some conversations about the business association. Mm -hmm. Do we want to put this out there where we're going to have a public hearing, let the business association know that that's happening? This um, isn't for businesses. This is no, for residents who don't have parking. Okay. This is because it, it's only strictly residential. It only permits parking from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. It's basically lifting the there's no parking ban in that lot so they can okay. park there. So my second part of my We're setting comment. up a meeting with okay. the business association. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Any correspondence to the town council? Yep. And uh, closing comments? Any other? Any closing comments? I have one. If nobody else has one, I'll make it one. the closing oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can go first. Uh, well, actually, I have a question because I forgot to bring the information with me. I know there's going to be a bonfire for the town, but uh, I don't remember the date or the, the time. The Boy Scouts <laughs> are sponsoring a. I don't have the information. I think it's in the last community it's on newsletter. It. Sorry. Um, oh, great. It's, it's on the, the calendar. Here we go. It's the 13th of, uh, of this month from 6 to 8 at the high school. But that's where people can... Not at the high school. Oh. At the Carpenter property. Across, across from the street. high school. Yes. I'm glad I can read. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I just <laughs> didn't want a bunch of Christmas trees <laughs> end up on the <laughs> high school front lawn. Yeah, I, <coughs> I think that's that's great because I live in a building where there's a lot of Christmas trees yeah. getting dragged down to our dumpster. <laughs> and it's like, no, don't just leave them by the dumpster. Well, you know, they, we, and they we call... put a flyer up for this. <laughs> they call a number... Right, this is not a town-sponsored event so we are not picking up trees the boy scouts boy scouts right. so right. they have to trees. call up to have their trees picked yeah. up yeah yeah but i i thought it was a great great mm -hmm. event mm -hmm. yeah and it'll be over before any potential patriots playoff game <laughs> 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 i was actually concerned about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. i'm sure yeah. that there are probably some people <laughs> in the we're concerned also um and um my comment was that uh, before you know it on this, as a matter of fact, opening on January 24th will be uh, the time when people can sign up if they're interested in being a candidate for the town council or for the budget committee and for other town positions. And um, I, for, uh, I, you know, we get a lot of comments. I get a lot of comments from people that feel that the town is doing well, and I think people generally feel good about how uh, things are going in Newmarket right now. Uh, I think it's really important for anybody who thinks they might be interested to uh, to step forward. It's really important to have uh, good candidates. We've had great candidates, but it's always a little scary right now while you're waiting for new people to come forward. So I'm um, not, not saying how, who's going to run again and who's not going to run again, but I do think usually there are openings, and it's uh, uh, it's, it's really great to have uh, contested uh, contests and uh, we appreciate people considering it and uh, seeing no other lights or comments the meeting is adjourned thank you thank you yep we're all set